Hi guys. So, I thought I'd come on and do a bit of a impromptu video because I've been getting a lot of messages surrounding the same kind of um, issue at the moment in terms of, of loneliness within the hobby. I'm going to get onto that in a minute. First of all, please continue supporting Composite Games. They do a lot of work for the channel and they're really helping me build the, astro uh, the Astral Blades. And uh, we may be getting uh, Heresy Era Power Armor Astral Blades just to show things off a little bit. I've had to rework the Astral Blades lore as well. So, you know, if you want to support me, support the channel, use the promo code Northern Exile at the link down below to get yourself 5% off. They already do 20% off of most of their stock if it's Games Workshop or anything like that. So you could end up from 25% off at checkout. Also, if you want to be involved in our competition to win £30 worth of English pounds, real pounds, real money, uh, worth of models or anything that you want from Composite Games, let me know. Um, I go into the Patreon down below, say hi. Or support the channel by becoming a member. Either of those two things will get you uh, an instant entry into the prize draw. Um, the, the top prize is, of course, that £30 from Composite Games that I will pay for myself. And because it's taking a while for me to get you American people um, your, your discount codes, if somebody in the States wins this, I will ship it myself. I'll pay for it and I'll ship it myself. Whatever you want, I'll get it to you, okay? So, Patreon's down below. There's, there's no amount that you need to need to put in, just whatever. It could be, could be a penny, could be whatever, I don't mind. Or support the channel through uh, becoming a member. Each of those people will be interred into our new um, prize draw. So, and of course, if you like the video, stuff like that, please make sure that you uh, you subscribe, like the channel, like the channel, like the video. And yeah, let's get on with it. So, again, it's going to be a pretty impromptu one. There are no stories today. Um, sent mainly because at the time of recording, I'm taking my grandpa to do some, um, some work, well, not some work, but to go and get some things done with the doctor. So I will not have time today to be recording a big long video on Hobby Nightmares, hence me not giving you the backer stuff today. Um, but yeah, we'll be on Wednesday. So, I have received, I'm, no, I'm not shitting you, I've received six different messages from people talking about loneliness in the hobby and not being able to make friends and not being able to get people on side when they're in the hobby. Now these are people who have different sort of issues, autism, you know, things like that. But before we go into that, I wanted to just poke on uh, something that I was discussing um, on Friday about Elden Ring. Because it's crazy to me because we had a video that wasn't about Elden Ring at all and, you know, People were talking about Elden Ring mostly in the comments, disagreeing with what I was saying. And that's fine. We're allowed to disagree, guys. We're allowed to disagree. Um, I played Elden Ring this weekend. I played it quite extensively this weekend. And I have softened my stance quite a bit. Because when people tell me something and tell me that I'm wrong, normally I will revisit what I've been told. That's what you're supposed to do when people disagree with you. You wish to readjust and go, hmm, do they have a point? And you do have a point. You definitely do have a point. It is a lot easier um, I've nearly I've nearly finished it now, but it is a lot easier than uh, previous incarnations of FromSoft games. I actually think this is their best one. And in terms of um, difficulty sliders, I would say Elden Ring doesn't need it. You know, there are definitely other games that do. Because um, I will always fight on the side of that person who is working all day and is like, I'm getting home, I don't want stress, I just want a game, but I love the, this game world, I want to I get from A to Z in it. I'll always support their right to just play the game however they want, do you know what I mean? Um, but I really like the way that, that the summoning system works, and I think that really makes sure that you don't really need a, a difficulty slider in Elden Ring, you know? But anyway, moving on, let us go into my general advice on how to get friends in the hobby. It is a really weird thing, and I know this the video isn't going to be as long as usual, so I, I know that, you know, some of you are going to be quite disappointed by that, but hey, it, it is what it is. I wanted to cover this, because I think it's quite... It deserved its own video, because I think it's quite important. I see this all the time in gaming groups and in hobby stores. Uh, the, the, you'll, you'll see it when next time you go into a hobby store, wherever you are. There's always a guy standing around, genuinely interested in what's going on, but he's hovering, sort of lurking. Uh, to the edge of things and not really talking to anybody but trying to make sure that he's seen by people and he never speaks up they, they always stand there and they're always like you can tell they want to you can tell they want to get involved but they just they just don't have the not the wherewithal but the bravery i suppose because approaching anybody in a social setting is very is a very very brave thing to do 
And one thing, I was out last night with a few friends, and somebody just approached us and started talking to us because they thought that he that he knew some of us. And I just started thinking back to the messages messages that I've been getting on Discord and thinking, oh my god, like this guy just came over and did this, but what people don't understand, for some people, especially nerds, that's like the hardest thing you can ever ask anybody to do. It's incredible how certain people just are able to do it. They're able to just go and, you know, approach different groups and things like that. Now, one thing I will say, I'm going to answer a few questions here. Uh, I'm not going to read them out. I'm just going to answer them as I'm talking. As I'm talking. How else would I answer them? Through the post. Um, but yes, I genuinely think it's extremely, extremely difficult to approach somebody in a gaming setting. Especially when they're concentrating on what they're doing. Every single time... I'm, I'm, I'm getting this more and more now. And I don't deserve this because I have this like tiny shrub of a channel. And no one, you know, my, my my lovely supporters and and subscribers watch my stuff, but nobody else really does. Um, but I've actually been approached a few times playing Warhammer 40,000 in a setting, and people have been like, oh, hello, uh, I know your voice from somewhere. And I said, yeah, I, I, I do YouTube. Oh, right, yeah, I'm going to get into it. So I'm realizing more and more and more the people who aren't stepping forward to say hello and they're just standing around and not really getting involved and sort of backing off quite a bit. Um, and I'm also noticing that when I'm trying to give people that time of day whilst I'm playing a game of Warhammer 40,000, I can't really. And I can only assume that that comes across like I don't want to speak to people. And I can only assume that in our game and our, and our hobby, other people come across that as well, where they try and get involved and the other people just aren't, they say seem not interested. Not because they're not interested, but simply because they're very invested in the game that's going on. And they'll talk to you all day until the cows come home after the game's finished. But whilst the game is going on, they're very, 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 shall I say, focused on what they're doing. Um, one other thing. This is going to sound really, really, really bad from an, from an advice standpoint. Because I hate it when people say this to people who've got depression and stuff. Like saying, oh, just do it, you know. Just just get, get over it, just do it. But in terms of approaching people... In terms of finding friends in the hobby, that is really the only way you can do it. Do not rely on the internet. And this is another thing somebody said to me uh, earlier, you know, how would I go about finding somebody, finding a date in the hobby? One, I've got a video on that, but it's from Christmas time. Um, to be honest with you, don't. <laughs> like, like, if it's meant to happen, it'll happen. And I, I hate it when people say shit like that because it makes you feel so helpless. I mean, it'll happen if it happens. It'll happen, you know, whenever it needs to. It makes you feel so shitty and helpless and that, you, that you're not worth anything or that you've just got to sit in a queue and wait to get friends or boyfriends or girlfriends or whatever you're into. But in terms of the more you look for these things, the less they will turn up. In all honesty, the only thing you can do to make friends in the hobby is expose yourself to those friends. And what I mean by that is don't like get your drunk out. What I mean is um, be around them, right? Be around people of a like mind. Chime in in a conversation try and find common ground with people and if you can tell a joke be funny i know it sounds really 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 horrible but like it, it's just i've known people right who have had severe autism but i've been hilarious because they don't even realize that they're being funny everybody has the wherewithal to be genuinely charming and genuinely helpful if you're a bright happy person and you want to give everybody the time of day you will make friends in the hobby. And this is one of the only hobbies in geekdom where I can actually say that that's true without any back backlift or without any, you know, you know, without any, without pulling my punches. I honestly do feel that in, in Warhammer, if you are an open, genuine person and you want to make friends, those friends will find you. No matter what you're doing, no matter where you are, if you're in the hobby store, those friends will find you eventually, okay? It might take them a little while because in our hobby we do harbor a lot of broken people okay we harbor a lot of people who need some support we harbor and, and this is why uh, my empathy buttons get switched on when i'm talking about things like elden ring which is why i was bringing it up before um because i always think of people like that who are overly stressed who don't want to you know deal with shit like that but still want to be involved Again, we've discussed it with gatekeeping. You know, there's two different sides to gatekeeping. One of them is essential to keeping the hobby the hobby. 
and the other one is essential that we get rid of it because it actually confirms everybody's worst feelings about Warhammer players. You know, that we're in Chiller, that we play with our toys in a specific way and we don't want anyone coming into our hobby and we're misogynists and, and this and that and whatever, right? We're not. We're not. This is probably one of the most tolerant hobbies that I've ever been a part of and it's, it's, and it's the only one, really, with me that stayed the course. Um, I've known people come into the hobby who, who haven't had really a shred of... Um, social skills at all, especially when I was running a store, when I was running a Games Workshop store, all the time that would happen. I've, I've said before about the lad who literally couldn't speak and ended up finding a friend or multiple friends in the Games Workshop store because that's the kind of hobby we have in that, you know, lads like that, whoever they are, can come in and genuinely find somebody, you know, a companion here or a friend there to talk to and go over hobby shop with and things like that. It's one of those hobbies, and I just I cherish it for that. I think it's the most incredible hobby to be a part of. If you're looking for friends, all you've got to do is get in there. All you've got to do is walk into a store and show a genuine interest in what people are doing. Because we're all there for the same reason. And it's completely okay to be afraid. It's completely okay to not really get how to approach conversation. That's fine. But just remember, the next time you feel that way, everybody in this hobby is broken to some extent. That's why we're here. That sounds really harsh, but it's true. Every single person in this hobby is broken to some extent or another. Everybody's dealing with trauma. Everybody's dealing with bullying when they're in school. Everybody's dealing with a bad breakup. Everybody's dealing with society at large pissing them off. You know? Everybody's dealing with that in the hobby. It's really shitty. But we come into these worlds to make sure that we have somewhere to have an outlet. And if you want that outlet, it's there. But standing around and not getting involved, friends aren't going to come to you. And I've given this advice to, to multiple guys I've spoken to as well when they're looking for girlfriends. They're not going to come to you. Okay? Uh, they're not just going to... If you're applying for, for work, they're not going to come... You know, think that... That your perfect job isn't going to come and find you. You've got to go find it and make yourself marketable and get out there. Now, I know that sounds really harsh when we're talking about friends and trying to make sure that you have them. But you've got to get on the... I call it the batter's mound. I don't even play baseball. I've never played before in my life. I call it rounders because that's what it is. It's just a, just a more organized form of rounders. Anyway, you've got to get on the batter's mound to hit a home run. And if you don't hit one, that's fine. Keep putting yourself on the batter's mound. Keep putting yourself there and swinging and swinging and swinging. You know, social skills like anything in life get rusty when you don't use them. The only thing you're doing by standing there and being afraid of talking to people is you're getting rusty. You're not, you know, you're not exercising your social muscles. Same thing goes with talking to, to women, right? Talking to women is exactly the same skill. If you don't do it, you get rusty. This is my main thing when I came out of a very long-term relationship. You, those of you who are on the channel last year will know, I came out of a very long relationship. And I had no... I used to be really good at speaking to the opposite, opposite sex. And I just had no skill in it whatsoever. Because I'd had so long of my radar being switched off and my social skills being switched off. I was terrified of approaching women or talking to them in a group. I, I, I thought they'd think I was a creep or something. Turns out, they don't. <laughs> turns out, I mean, and I still feel these things now, I even felt it last night, I was like, oh, I want to speak to this person, and I thought, no, I'll probably, I'll probably end up bothering her. You're feeling exactly the same way when you're in a hobby store. I want to speak to this person, but I'm going to probably end up bothering them. I mean, it's, it's so difficult to get over because of the, the horrid, narcissistic um, society that we live in, in which... You know, a, a, a bloke can't a, can't approach a girl anywhere now without being called, you know, uh, either a white knight or a simp or, you know, or whatever. Sometimes you're just, you just find somebody interesting and you're like, hey, I like your tattoos. Where'd you get them? Or, hey, I like your hair. Where'd you get it done? Or, you know, hey, you're doing Dark Eldar. Oh, that's pretty cool. How did you paint them? Why did you decide on that painting scheme? You know, things like that. Sometimes you're just genuinely interested and there's no ulterior motive. Okay. You need to understand, and so do I to, certain, to a certain extent sometimes, but you need to understand that people want to be approached nine times out of ten. 
And if they don't, they're not just going to tell you to piss off. It never happens. Right? It only ever happens in the movies. It never. I've never seen it happen before. When somebody genuinely comes over with a genuine interest in what's going on, and they get rebuffed, I've never seen it happen. Not not as black and white as that, anyway. So it could be like, hey man, like, like I'm a bit busy, but you know, you can get that. That's the worst that will happen. Is you get a soft turn down, essentially. You know, I, and still, I've hardly ever seen that happen either. You know, everybody wants to be approached. Everybody wants to discuss this wonderful hobby that we're a part of. That's the one thing you need to remember when you're going into these social settings. Okay? I don't mean approach everybody in the class. I don't mean e approach everybody in the, the store, wherever you are. What I mean is, if you find something genuinely interesting, then ask questions about it. Approach that group. Ask to know more about it. If more people did that with things like Horus Heresy, then we wouldn't need to make gatekeeping videos. We wouldn't need to make videos ensuring that people are approaching the hobby in the right way. Because you have, if you have a genuine interest in it, a social interest, people will respond to that. I, We have some of the most kind-hearted, wonderful people in this hobby. I know it doesn't come across that way, because I run a show called Hobby Nightmares. <laughs> but um, the reason why Hobby Nightmares work so well is because it's quite rare. It's, it's that. It's because it's quite rare. We've all had one or two horror stories, and it's actually quite rare to walk into a hobby store and get genuine shitty behavior. You know, I know this because I was immersed in it for years. It was genuinely my job. I would, I would stand there all day in a hobby store for years, seeing these interactions day by day. And I could pick up, you know, two or three incidents off the top of my head in those years. You know, but when I was doing bar work, I could give you two or three incidents every single weekend when I was doing bar work. You know? People will have a, have a go at hobbyists for not being that well behaved in social circles, but I'm telling you this. It, it was the normal people, quote unquote, that gave me the most headaches when I was in a social in a social circle. Or when I was working in, in a in a hospitality front front of house, you know, sector. It was normal people who were giving you the who were giving you the grief. You know, I would very, very, very rarely get any trouble in a hobby store. The one thing I did see in a hobby store was people showing. If you showed a genuine interest in somebody's hobby, they can't wait to tell you about it. Especially if you're not wearing a Games Workshop T-shirt when you're there. You know, if another customer comes over and says, "Hey, that's really cool. How did you paint those Iron Warriors?" or "That's really cool. How did you get a L'Oreal skin to like glow like that?" Oh, that's really cool, right? Everybody wants to discuss their hobby, which is one of the things in Games Workshop's training that I really don't like in that they try and uh, Siphon it off. They try and make it so that you know I Used to when I was being trained I would approach people as if I was just a hobbyist and I would talk to them about their hobby and When they asked me questions about mine, I'd, I'd talk about mine for a bit and then I'd go back to them <clears throat> And that was drilled out of me during my training like they want it to be so corporate and cold you need to go over to people like a robot and and try and get them to buy things. I just it didn't understand it. You 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 get more sales by just being a normal human being. It just that's just how it works. It just every single time I made a really good sale, it was because I was really enthused in that person's hobby and what they were doing. You know, I asked them genuine questions. I wasn't ticking off a box. I wasn't ticking off a list saying you know you should do this and you should do that and and have you have you seen Space Marines? You know, and no one. Some people don't like Space. Marines. Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. Um. But that is the genuine thing that you need to do. I've said genuine about 90 times in this video, mainly because it's essential. Just show that interest. Go over and show that interest and let them know, hey, this is really cool. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about this? And do you know what? You'll be you'll be lucky if that hobbyist doesn't write you a fucking memoir. <laughs> they like talking about hobby that much. You know? If you're needing to... You're in a very lucky, privileged position as a Warhammer player. You were involved in the hobby that I think is the most, you know, making friends friendly in the world. You know, I think if you're going to make friends, this is the place to be. We have the best hobby in the world filled with the best people in the world. And as soon as, as, soon as you realize that, man, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be fine. You're going to be totally, totally fine. Now, I did have a question. Yeah, about doing drugs or um, getting drunk. 
or having or, or getting a, getting a buzz on before going into a social situation like this. Um, I would say that's a slippery slope. There's a very good reason why I don't drink at home, and that's because um, I think it's kind of tragic because no one's here to socialize with. The best thing to do is to treat going out as going out and going to the hobby store as going to the hobby store. I wouldn't um, alter yourself in any way because if you look at it on the down low here, you're not making any progress. That's you, They're not really meeting you, are they? They're meeting high you or drunk you. You may have Dutch courage, but that's not going to save you when that wears off and then you've got to go speak to them again. You don't learn social skills by being pissed in a social situation where other people aren't pissed, for instance, right? <clears throat> this is why I say, yeah, you can you can learn to socialize going out and drinking because everyone's going out and drinking and they're all in the same boat. But going into a hobby store, no, not the best way to do it. I wouldn't advise you to do that. I would actually advise you to actually um, go in cold turkey. I know it's harder. I know it's more difficult. But, you know, it's just nothing worth having is easy. You know, it just isn't. So, if you're struggling for friends, another thing you can do, Discord, down below, go and join it. Please, we're all here for you. Come and speak to us on Discord. Come and have a chat on Discord. All right, I'm there for you. Come and add me on Discord and talk to me. I always get back to you. It takes me a while, but I always get back to you. Or use the fan mail. Again, I always get back to you. Or even email me. Just ask for my email in the comments below. I don't want to put it in the, in the description. But ask for my email and I'll give it to you. I don't mind. If you need somebody to talk to, I'm here. My Discord is here. We're all, I think we're all wonderful people in there. I think that, you know, my dis I'm very, very, very lucky to have such a really cool Discord. So, if that's what you need, we're here. I know this sounds really corny and really stupid. And no one's going to really enjoy this video or want to watch it. But I just thought it was very important to get out there to let people know, hey, support does exist. I've said, I've one or two videos on this before in the past. I just thought I needed to update it because people aren't getting those videos, as in they're not going back and watching them, which is fine. They happened like six months ago. But my stance hasn't changed. If you want to make friends in the hobby, go into a hobby space and ask genuine questions through genuine interest. That's all you need to do. And eventually, you will get there. And we also have a hobby where you play Warhammer games. It's a natural breeding ground for for friendships and relationships. It is. I know three married couples who met playing Warhammer. No, one of them was playing D and D. But I, you know, I know three couples who met doing that. It's just a natural thing. If you can have the social skills to play Warhammer. And have a laugh whilst doing so with the person you're playing with. You already have the skill set to approach people and make friends. It's exactly the same skill set. Alright? If you're struggling with anything, come onto the Discord. Say hello to us. Say hello to me. Do whatever. If you're in the northwest of England or anywhere like that, give me a call. If you're ever in town around me, right? I'm in the Liverpool area. I will come. I will see you. You know? No problem. Okay? I hope to see some more of you when I go to Composite Games in July. If I don't get stood up. Anyway. Love you all a long time. Have a really, really, really good rest of your day. I just thought that was an important video to just get that out there. Scatterbrain-ish, I know. Like, I, I had no script there. I just went ad-libbed it because I just thought it'd be more important to do that and get it out there. So you've got my... It's like a genuine interaction between us. How nice. Um, if you want like to want to support me back, Composite Games is the way to do that. Head on there. They've got a 5% discount running if you use the promo code Northern Exile. They already do 20% off, as I said at the start of the video. So make sure you go and check them out and help them out. If you, you know, if you need to fulfill that need of some hobby stuff, help me out. Um, also, uh, I am one or two messages away from getting some US stuff for you guys. Some US promo code. So I think we're making progress. We're almost there. Um, I love you all a long time. Have a really good rest of your day. And... Start your week well, please. Alright? Love y'all. See you later.